Archaeologists spent years studying Shubaika 1 in Jordan's Black Desert. Why? Because experts believed ancient residents could shed light on one of humanity's greatest inventions. Researchers found ancient meat. Professor Dorian Fuller, all of this is dependent on the new methodological developments that allow us to identify the remains of bread from very small charred fragments using high magnification. It is still largely unknown where bread first came from, despite the fact that it is one of the most important foodstuffs that are consumed in the modern world. In this study, we present the earliest empirical evidence for the preparation of bread-like products by Natufian hunter-gatherers. This evidence dates back 4,000 years to a time before the advent of the Neolithic agricultural way of life. As a result of the discovery of charred food remains, it has been possible to reconstruct the chain of operations for the early production of products that are comparable to bread. According to the findings of our study, the wild ancestors of domesticated cereals, such as wild einkorn and club rush tubers, could be used to make products that are comparable to flat bread. When Neolithic farmers started relying on the cultivation of domesticated cereal species for their subsistence, probably around the same time, cereal-based meals, such as bread, probably became staples in the diet. There is still a lot of mystery surrounding where bread first came from. The discovery of bread at Neolithic sites in Europe and Southwest Asia in its earliest stages led to the conclusion that its invention was associated with fully developed agricultural communities that made use of domesticated plant species. In Southwest Asia, where the wild ancestors of domesticated crops such as wheat and barley occur naturally, hunter-gatherers of the Upper Paleolithic period, around 23,000 years before the present day, were already producing flour from wild grasses. Furthermore, some authors claim that the invention of brewing, groats, porridge, and unleavened bread could have occurred as early as the late Epipaleolithic period or the Natufian period. 
Even though the discovery is extremely interesting, you might be wondering why there is so much excitement surrounding it, particularly among historians. Before this loaf was discovered, the earliest evidence of bread was discovered in Turkey and dated back 9,000 years. This discovery debunks the theory that bread first appeared in the world some 5,000 years after it actually did appear. The development of agriculture and the early farming civilization served as a motivating factor for people to begin cultivating plants and engaging in agricultural activities. Bronze Otagi bases this possibility on the fact that people have been eating bread for a very, very long time. The hunter-gatherer site known as Shubaika 1 is situated in northeast Jordan, in an area known as the Black Desert. This site dates back to the early and late Natufian period which spans from 14.6 to 11.6 Ka Kal BP. Shubaika 1 is, along with El Wad Terrace, one of the oldest Natufian sites found in Southwest Asia. Structure 1, the older of the two buildings on the site, is a semi subterranean structure with a carefully built flagstone pavement made of local basalt stones. The other building on the site, known as Structure 2, is a well preserved superposition of the two. This structure is made up entirely of Natufian deposits. It contains diverse artifacts, including chipped stones, tools made from ground stone, animal bones, and plant remains. After the fireplace had been used for the final time, it was left unattended and subsequently encased in a substantial deposit that covered the entire structure, approximately 0.5 meters. During the subsequent phase of occupation at the site, the people built a new fireplace on top of the old one in almost the same location. It was very comparable in size and shape and was constructed out of angular basal boulders. The firewood and other contents of this fireplace were also left behind when the house was abandoned. Seven radiocarbon dates of the short-lived charred plant remain found within the fireplaces indicating that they were used around 14.4 to 14.2 Ka Kal BP. This time period corresponds to the early Natufian period. The fireplaces unearthed a remarkable archaeobotanical assemblage, which included more than 65,000 well-preserved non-woody plant macro remains belonging to at least 95 different taxonomic groups. Food remains that have been preserved in archaeological sites provide empirical data on prehistoric plant food selection, preparation, and consumption activities that would otherwise be very difficult to characterize. These activities would have been very difficult to characterize if the food remains had not been preserved. In this investigation, we present the findings from a total of 24 artifacts that fit the description of bread-like. The analysis involved low magnification microscopy to determine the remains size, texture, particles and inclusions and scanning electronic microscopy to identify plant particles, ingredients, and characterize the matrix, the number and types of voids. Six specimens were starch analyzed. How did the bread from prehistoric times manage to stay fresh after being stored for such a long time? Not at all, as it turns out. The archaeologists found the charred remains of the pastry that had been placed around the fireplaces at the site. It wasn't until after the thorough analysis that it was determined to be bread, based on archaeological criteria. Based on the estimation, 
measurement, and typological classification of plant particles and voids visible in the food matrix, a total of 24 food remains from Shubaika 1 have already been classified as bread-like products. These findings come from the excavation of the site. Out of these 24, 22 were discovered in the oldest fireplace, and only two were found in the more recent one. At the macroscopic level, each of the fragments displayed a starchy microstructure that was frequently vitrified and an irregular porous matrix. These characteristics are consistent with well-processed food components. These findings are consistent with artifacts referred to as flatbreads, discovered at various Neolithic and Roman Age sites in Europe and Turkey. When it comes to the components that went into the food preparations found in Shubaika 1, the results point to the presence of some remains that were made of cereals. In contrast, others were made of a combination of cereals and other components that were not cereal-based. Fifteen of the fragments contained cereal tissue, primarily pericarp tissue, longitudinal and transverse cells or bran layers, endosperm cell structures, alerone layers, and starch-containing cells. The remaining nine fragments did not contain cereal tissue. At least five of the bread-like remnants contained non-cereal components, such as parenchyma cells, vascular tissue, and root-type starch. These components were found in the bread-like remains. Where can you enjoy 15,000-year-old bread? The researchers have started working on developing a recipe for this bread. They have already achieved success in milling the tubers that are used in the preparation of traditional cuisine. The tubers that are used to make the bread are described by Aran Sotogi as being quite gritty, salty, and sweet all at the same time. It is only a matter of time before the bread that has been stored the longest is made available once again. In general, the findings show that charred food remains are preserved in prehistoric sites in Southwest Asia. The analysis provides first-hand and detailed information on the components of the human diet and cooking technology, which is extremely difficult to achieve by any other means. Incorporating these additional lines of evidence will make it possible to conduct a more critical and comprehensive assessment of the food consumption patterns of hunter-gatherers and farmer-herders, thereby delivering fresh perspectives on the evolution of plant food gathering to plant food production. That's it for today! What do you think of this video? Let us know in the comments below! And if you enjoyed this one, be sure to like it and hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.